Hello, hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Episode 7. Episode 7. So, going through all the yellows I've just looked on the box. The next... Including this one, one, two, three, four. The next seven out of nine episodes are yellows. Today, 216. This one here. Jasmine yellow. Let's get the. Uh... So what am I going to draw today? I was a uh, before coming on stream, just doodling, scribbling with some lettering, um, trying to figure out how to get my sketchbook drawings combining with graffiti lettering. Um, I might, I'm, I'm going to carry on with that after this. That's probably what I'm going to do most of today. I might stream it, I might not. I don't know. But for now, let's see what Jasmine Yellow has to offer. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. Look at that, look how different that is. I mean, but from the lid colour, you'd think that's going to be quite a... Quite a pale, muted, is that the word? Muted yellow, but no, it seems quite bright. But absolutely no idea where I'm going to be going with this one. This is probably going to be a more random... Normally I have a little bit of an inkling where I want to go, like I'll, you might notice that it's kind of roughly similar to a previous drawing that I've done the day before. Um, this one though, I'm not so sure. I was also looking up how to um, increase sub counts on YouTube and I was looking at it on TikTok as well. TikTok's going through this thing at the minute where your videos, I don't know if this is just art videos or a lot of different people are having this issue where around about 250 it just stops. Like I got to, as in views, like I got 250 views like really, really quickly. On my last few TikToks and it just stops dead. Doesn't go anywhere else after that. Uh, I find that a bit strange. YouTube has been going a bit meh. I'm, I'm not breaking 100 on any videos. I thought it was steadily increasing after I got a video not so long ago. I broke a thousand. I thought, oh, maybe I might get a few more, but nah. It's kind of stalled. I think I mentioned in my last stream that I'm just going to focus on being consistent, which I obviously am. I'm going to keep doing, but I can't help but be curious about it. Like, why there's some videos. From other content creators go massive. I just find it curious. But never mind about that now. Today we're drawing with yellow. I never normally draw or I never normally use yellow as a main colour. I always think it's not 
strong enough. Like I've, I've, I've got a neon yellow that I use um, for blocking in colours and maybe some background stuff, but. For main drawings, I always tend to use blues and greens and reds, purples, pinks, even never yellows. But this one, though, you never know. Like the next yellow I use as well, I might have a look at that. I don't know if it's a Friday thing, but every time I pull this stream out, there always seems to be neighbours' chickens go kicking off. I think my drink's farting as well. It's just come out the freezer. Shown quite nicely on camera. Do you know what? I wouldn't mind. I mean, I need a better lighting setup anyway, but you've just got to use what you got, haven't you? Um, but I wouldn't mind changing the light bulb in my room light to white because it's that kind of horrible, sort of yellowy colour. I think what I've started to do with some of these drawings, the last sketchbook drawing I did, like I, 
I've started to kind of lean more into um, what I think of as the 2D game influence side of it. So the, I think I mentioned before that one of my influences are shoot 'em ups, old shoot 'em ups like R Type, Metroidvania games, that kind of thing. Um, and I just like sort of pulling references from there, like shapes, just basic shapes, and then knitting them together with sort of smaller lines and sort of blocks of colour underneath. So it looks like sort of panels with sort of electronics and and details underneath. I think with the last sketchbook drawing I did, um, I kind of lent more into that. Uh, I think that's kind of refined my own style a little bit more. Because um, it's just what I enjoy drawing. I, I like sort of doing big shapes and then sort of messing about with details underneath it. Uh, and I was really happy with the drawing that I did before. I think leaning into that kind of um, that kind of style, that kind of influence, um, is helping me a bit. I think it's helping with my uh, graffiti lettering as well. Because as much as I, I love, I've said before, I absolutely love graffiti. I love the style of it. Um, I don't um, tend to draw what you would, I suppose, you would call traditional uh, graffiti. I don't know if that's the, the name of it, but what I suppose you'd associate with graffiti, like you you say graffiti to somebody, and you've got a an image in your head of what that would look like. Your normal sort of tags, 3D style, wild style. Um, I have drawn that before, but I just don't feel at home when I do draw that. It's not my natural sort of style. So I wanted to make or try and do more sort of abstracted. I mean, I know graffiti is kind of an abstraction in itself already, but but just make it more unique, I guess. Like I've mentioned before, other graffiti artists start to follow D R M L Z, um, Modia. Um, who was the other one? I've still got the um, the page up. Knock. Uh, Cam One or Canon, I don't know how you pronounce that. There's one called Dupe 77. Uh, there's an artist called Lick, L I K. Uh, yeah, Modi and Medaya as well. They're a bit more. I suppose, is abstract the right word? I suppose it is, but they're a, a little bit less traditional. They seem to focus more on sort of basic shapes and line work. Um, that I really really like, um, and though seeing the, the seeing their work has made me think, yeah, there is a space for for sort of someone like me to to occupy where it, I don't do, I suppose, what would be considered normal, more traditional style graffiti. Um, but a bit more. abstract and sort of unique style. It's just kind of finding the best way to apply it. Like the two graffiti drawings I've done in, in a sketchbook already and the ones I've done before, but, but I've said before I wasn't really happy with. I don't hate them, but I just think, mm, I don't think they work hugely well. I swear they keep zooming, I swear the camera keeps zooming out. Um,
happy. I wasn't happy with the previous two that I did. So I thought I'll go back to the drawing board, see if I can figure something out, do something else. And there was a um, a drawing that I did before. I did mention this that knocked me a little bit. Like I said, they weren't being mean or anything. And someone said it's not strictly graffiti. That made me kind of shy away from it. But I've sort of since revisited it. I thought, Do you know what? I actually... I, I do really like that. Uh, what I did before. And these pieces here, though, the sketchbook pieces in this kind of drawing is also heavily influenced by uh, graffiti. I do tend to look a lot at graffiti work uh, for the detailing for 3D shapes if ever I use it. Um. And I have seen graffiti artists kind of put, I don't want to use the word random, but sort of non-letter graffiti art or pieces work. I think it's really, really good. I think the thing is as well that I know that the process and building up your portfolio and getting more work out there, getting more eyes on your work, I know that process is going to be very, very grindy and it's going to take time and all that kind of stuff. So what I want to do is make sure I actually enjoy the grind, a little bit like a video game. Throw in a game reference there because I am a gamer. Um, but yeah, like I, the, the, a lot of the times, like I don't mind games that you like, games that you think are fun. You don't mind grinding because the gameplay loop, whatever you want to call it, is actually fun, so you don't mind repeating it, trying to beat a score or trying to unlock new areas, items, etc. Like, a, a simple one is one of the things I like doing on um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's not normally my favourite type of video game, but one of the things I like about it, it's... I would say it's the video game equivalent of junk food. Sometimes you just want to sit down and just grind camos, like on shit. There's a map on it for those that don't called Shipment. It's just a very small map. You just run around, just shoot loads of people. Games don't last that long, and you rinse and repeat. It's just, it's just fun. You know, and it is a grind, it is repetitive, it is the same thing, but it's fun. You know, just good to sort of blow off steam for a bit. But I, I tend to only do it for about an hour. But it's just a good way to switch your brain off and go and grind some camos or just have a bit of fun. There's other video games as well. <clears throat> like I'm a big fan of the Tony Hawk's games. One of the grinds on there is to either try and beat your score or replay levels over again to try and... Because they do it in... You play in two-minute sessions. I think it's two minutes. Um, and it gives you a list of tasks to do. So you've got your main ones, beat a, beat a, beat a high score, beat a pro score, collect the letters escape, collect the letters combo... Collect. It's usually like three of an item or five of an item that are themed around the level that you're in. And then even after you've done the main ones, there's loads and loads of other ones. There's like gaps to find. 
grinds to do. So games like that that have got a very, very fun sort of game mechanic and a game loop. You don't mind grinding out. Because it's fun. And I understand that, you know, I want to do this as a... But, you know, the goal that I'm working towards is doing artwork and drawing as a f to make it my full-time job and means of income. And I understand that it's a grind, but I, I, I love doing it. I love the grind, so I'm going to keep, keep doing it. It's just thinking of a way to sort of make the grind fun. Hence, that's why I create this series. That's why I've... Got a few different sketchbooks to do a few different types of drawings and artwork. It's all good. We have a viewer. How are we? Hope you're well. Again, one viewer seems to be my... I know it says two. The other one is on my other YouTube channel. But I only have that up to make sure the stream works and to view comments because I've got no other way to do it. So I usually only seem to get one viewer. I've got no idea if it's the same viewer, if it's a different one each time. But whoever you are, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. I hope you like the drawing. If you haven't subscribed, subscribing would be awesome, as I don't have very many of them. This is a series that I started a few weeks ago. I did the, I, the very first episode on Twitch because I wanted to do a longer format. Um, type of drawing and I needed but sort of weigh in so I thought well why not why not use something you've already got and Twitch was alright and then between the first episode and the second one YouTube very generously decided that anybody with any amount of subs can stream so I thought well that's awesome I will stream on there from now on and I know Twitch I've said before that that was a big thing with them, where they cut down the amount of, was it the percentage that you got? If slash when you became a partner, I don't know what the split was. Um, but not only that, it's just, it's just much more convenient for me to keep stuff on YouTube. I've been a bit more consistent over the last week or two because I've drawn up, I've not written it down, but I have drawn up finally a timetable of when to record and what exactly I'm going to be recording. Um, one of the bonuses of that in particular is when I get free space to do other projects like if ever I need to do like a thumbnail or I've said I've said multiple times I want to start working digitally. I think I I have decided I think I am gonna go in the way of pixel art. Because it's a art style and art form that I absolutely adore. Um and most of my inspiration comes from pixel art games, so it's like what makes sense. at least to me, it makes sense to, um, to sort of follow suit. Um, and there are other painting projects. I used to paint um, sort of characters from movies that I liked, um, but I used to sort of draw them quite hyper-realistically. Not hyper-realistically, but basically as is, as is seen on the photo. And I quite enjoyed it, and I started to get all right at it, but 
I think one of the things that stopped me doing it, or I st one of the reasons I stopped enjoying it, was I did a couple of commissions for people where I was drawing like family members and all that kind of business, and um, it just became that's an example of where it became too grindy and I didn't enjoy it. Like it just took forever. Um, and there didn't seem to be any of my own style in it. I remember someone saying about one of my paintings, it was a compliment, it wasn't an insult, but it made me think about it was when they said they scrolled past it on their Facebook page. They scrolled past it, I think it was the picture, I drew a picture of um, Wesley Snipes from Demolition Man, Simon Phoenix, where he's holding the eye on the pen. And um, my f a friend of mine said they scrolled past that thinking it was a photo. And it was a lovely compliment, but it made me think there's no, there was no indication that that was my picture. It was that could have been a photo. Again, lovely compliment, but I just thought, mm, I don't want it to look or. I don't want people to think it's a photo. I want people to think I painted it. You know, that was one of the sort of early sort of seeds planted that made me want to kind of do this. Because I used to do drawings like this. When I was much younger, where I just used to draw... I used to do... Um, I remember sitting in a classroom when I was about seven or eight and I used to draw with my friends. We used to draw like levels that you could have in Mario or Sonic. We used to just get bits of paper and just draw boxes and platforms and think, oh, how could we, you know, could this be a level in Mario or whatever? And I always kind of dipped in and out of it throughout school and everything, but never thought that, oh, it could be a real sort of viable way to draw because I kind of had this, I won't say obsession, but I always had this kind of insecurity or thought process that you had to, you know, you had to learn to draw anatomy or you had to learn, I can't think of a better phrase than proper art, that, you know, painting still life whatever it was like things like graffiti art or game art it was when i was growing up as a kid it, it wasn't really looked at as a serious sort of medium of artwork i always kind of had it in my head you had to do a proper i can't think of a better word to describe it, but a proper a type of art And it was actually during lockdown, the only thing, the only good thing to come from that, where I thought, you know, stuff it, I'm just going to draw what I want, I'm going to draw what I enjoy. And I remember one of the things I loved drawing the most was graffiti. And I've used that to expand, to try and expand outwards with, with my art. Discover a lot of different artists on the way that have helped me, blah, 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 blah. I know I'm chatting shit, but... It is a uh, a live stream after all. Got to try and entertain somehow. I do like expanding out. I don't know where I'm going to put the because I always include the signature of the pen in the drawing somewhere, so A216. I don't know where I'm going to put this one. I might... Where did I put the last one? So the last one... So I'll put one in the bottom right. Sort of centre... The, the first two at the bottom right, then sort of in the middle on the bottom. Then bottom left, then bottom right again. And the last one was top left. Where to put this one? I do not know. 
I might put it on the right hand side over here somewhere. I don't know, I haven't decided. But I do like this colour. I just I was surprised I didn't think it looked like this. I thought it'd be a lot a lot duller. A lot paler based on the colour that it well I did um again that was another thing that inspired this series. I thought I'm not quite getting the colour that I thought based on the um the colour of the lid and the and the casing. Because when I put it on paper it's either a lot brighter and the colour's just a lot different. So I thought, right, that's actually starting to annoy me. So I put them all down on um, on paper just to see what they look like. And again, I've mentioned in other episodes that there's a couple of colours, a couple of pink colours that that don't even show up. There's one that just does not show up on the paper. You can't even read it. I mean, I'll do a picture with it just to see if I can make something from it, but I just found that really weird. I thought, why would you have a color like that in your, in your library? It doesn't even show up properly. I might start pestering that as a, and say, hey, hey guys, look, I'm giving your pens a proper workout to see if people should buy them or not, use them, give them a chance. I've used them enough to say, yeah, you should, they're good. Not just from this series, but I've used them in other work. Like I say, it's just that those two pink pens that confuse me. I do wonder where where will I be because I will always do this series today would have been a good day to maybe do two um, one today one this morning and well, one this afternoon or one this evening but like I said, I, I want to, because I've neglected the graffiti sketchbook a little bit, I want to put some time into um, building that back up and getting some drawings in on that. But in the future, I definitely do plan to do two of these a day at some point. Uh, but I, I do wonder where my channel my work and all that will be by the time i get to say episode 100 well not even 100 say halfway 60 because this is only episode 7 maybe maybe episode 30 i mean that would be depending on how many i decide to do a day between now and then it could be anywhere from 10 to 30 weeks away and i just think that would be interesting where will i be this career path by then but the one thing I've said to myself is to have a chance of making this work you have got to be consistent and that's one of the things I've struggled with in general in my life just having any sort of consistency 
And if I can channel it through this, maybe I'll start to be consistent in other parts of my life. Zooms fading in and out. Oh, I need to look into that, don't I? I keep saying it. Either folk, either mess about with the zoom. Not the zoom, the focus on streamlabs, or find a way to get the quality up on youtube itself but then I st i'd still have the same problem wouldn't i I'd probably faff about with the zoom in on that Needs to be brought in a bit, doesn't it? There you go, that's a bit better. Tilted a little bit, but. Oh god, man, that's awful. I'm pretty sure that I'm sure this thing is zooming out. I'm sure of it. Because I'm sure that it didn't look like that. It keeps... Sorry to the viewer. I'm faffing about with my camera. It doesn't seem to be... I don't know. One Maybe one day... I'll be able to afford a proper badass camera. I'll have to do it through a phone. But like I say, you work with what you got, don't you? Dun cha. And just make the most of it. Nothing else you can do. This Sunday, as well, I've, got, I've, I've said before, I've got a gaming channel that I've done with my friends. Something else has been neglected. And it's a Sunday as well. Not as if I'm busy on a Sunday.
Must, must, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I might do that now. 216. I need to remember it's the right one. A216. Right, so Coop. How you doing, man? You good? Did I miss it? Miss what? This? No, no, I've still got a ways to go yet. I've still got a, a good ways to go yet. I've only been on what, 43 minutes? Yeah, I'm usually on for a bit, for quite a bit. You're probably about maybe half, halfway, I want to say. Yeah, I was just chatting. There was someone else in earlier. I don't know who it was. I was chatting. Just spieling off about my work and stuff whilst they were in. Probably why they left. Doing good, thanks. Got a good night's rest. Good, good. How you doing? I'm all right. All right, thank you very much. I had a bit of a... Not a, dis not a disaster as it turns out, but right in the middle of recording my latest sketchbook drawing I got a phone call from school again <laughs> I'm a little lad uh one of his the him and his friends were playing in the school playground at lunch and uh, his mate tripped and fell on him and bent his hand back so he sprained his wrist or sprained his fingers he's fine he's back in school today but he'll have to miss PE um and I thought oh no because my missus was here but she had to shoot out um, to work so I thought right I'm gonna have to go for him but it all worked out fine he wasn't seriously hurt I was able to pause my record and it's all good most important thing was that he was okay and he was yeah I was just chatting earlier about the grind of work and because I want this to be a uh, fully a fully fledged job if you like career whatever you want to call it because of how early on I am into this it's just figuring out how 
to sort of best start making money from it. Obviously, YouTube's one of those ways. And I said in a previous stream I did that just focus on grinding. Like I had a little look before doing this video about building your sub count and all that kind of stuff. Like I think YouTube Shorts was like the way in, which I have neglected by the way. So I'm just like, all right, fair enough. I haven't been focusing much on that. But I, th I think that the main focus is just do the work. That's always been my sort of thought process. Um, and I've only just, because of, I've said to you before, I've only just drawn up a proper timetable. The rate at which my work is being put out there, I'm actually forcing myself to sit down and do it, whether that be a stream, whether it be a recording. Oh, sounds painful. He's okay. Yeah, it will do. Vibrant yellow looks really good in the detailed bits between the bigger ships. Ah, thank you. Yeah, I, I said then when I started this stream that I was actually surprised at how vibrant it looked because if you look at the color of the lid i mean look at it i can only just i mean it says it's jasmine yellow on the box but i can only describe that as piss yellow from the color of the lid that's the only word i would use to describe it but i was saying earlier that what one of the reasons i wanted to do this there was a few reasons i started this but one of them was because when i was doing other drawings that the colour on the lids did not match the colour of the ink when I put it on the paper. It doesn't matter if it was this paper or any other paper, it was always different. So I thought, right, I'm going to get all these down on paper. And when I did, it was like that and a few other factors of just getting stuff down. I thought, I'm going to draw a picture with every single one of these. Because I've done that, I've done that a couple of times. Like I'm, I'm still not massively satisfied with the selection of pens out there. Like I, I like working with fine liners like this, and then a thicker pen to sort of block in colours. And I thought I'd found the perfect pen when I found those stacker ones, but they bleed so badly. They bleed like a blimmin slasher horror victim that they are just not usable so definitely certainly not in my sketchbook they're not usable the where i record they're not usable so there's like two sets of pens that i've bought like 120 pens where i know i'm not going to use them all so it's like well i need to do something with them But there is a set of pens I do want to get. Like, I don't want to just spam by a load of pens all the time. But I've started to... The more I've done this, the more I've started to figure out how I like to use colour, how best to use colour. Um, sort of make create a bit more depth and a bit more shadow. But... Like if I use a red, for example, then I'll use another red close to it to sort of give off that impression. And in fine, and with the fine liners, especially the one on the Arteza ones, yeah, there's loads of options there. It's working great. But if I need to fill in any sort of large blocks of colour, I'll be damned if I'm going to be like if say I wanted to fill in these blocks with a different colour, I'm not using this fine liner to do every single block because one, it'll take ages. And I noticed this with when I did this as an experiment. This was a little inspiration for my 
thumbnail as well. I remember when I did this, I thought, oh, I like the effect of gradienting a grey. But because I'm blocking in colour with fine liner, you can see all the strokes. Which, it doesn't look awful, but if you're going to block in colour, it's not the best way to do it. And it just took forever as well. So I thought, I need a better pen to block in colour. Um, I've got a load of Copic markers over there, but they're alcohol based. So again, because of the way they bleed through on normal paper, you need bleed proof paper. You can't really use them. But the only pen that I've used so far that's really good at it, or the sets of pens, were these Statler ones here, which motivated me to get the other ones that I did. And these Stabilo ones, which these are my favorite. These are really, really good. And I found a box of 68. That's the most they do. But they're 60 quid. And you're like, oh, no. That's a lot. Like, I don't need, like, a million colours. Like, 68 should be enough. It's just the price. Like, I looked at the colours as well, and they seem to fit. I ordered a new dotted sketchbook, by the way. Oh, nice! A red mechanical pencil with red lead. Love it. The grey gradient had a nice texture to it because of the strokes, but I understand it's very time consuming. Yeah, like I like it, I don't mind the effect of it, but sometimes you're not after you're not after that effect. You want you want it to look like a block of colour, and like I said, the time it it takes to use those pens to block in, it's just. Ugh. But I'm loving the uh, the dot the dot grid selection. Um, so I got this one. This was a birthday present I got. I think I ordered it with some birthday money. This is a dock pad, and the paper's quite. The paper's really nice. Um, and this is where this is again one of the places I started. I think it was this drawing that made me think. Okay, this is this was one of a, a big divergent of going off and doing the sort of style I'm doing now. And where are you? That was the first one I recorded, but that, I, I loved that one, and I thought, oh, I wish I'd recorded that. Um, and then I found, there's a brand called Rodea. So that's this one. That's where I do all these ones. And I really like uh, the off, it's not quite white, it's like a creamy colour, which I quite like because I think in the future, I can use like a white pen to kind of add detail. Um, and this paper that I'm using now is Rodea as well. It's quite, th it's a bit thin, I think it's 80 GSM, but it's re it feels really smooth when you draw across the, across the paper. That's quite uh, why I like it. It just depends what you're after. I, I, when I was um, looking for pads as well, it, the thickness of the paper plays a big part. That's the one I've ordered the road. Oh, nice one. Wait, uh, this one here. This one. That's, is that the one you've ordered? I really like, but all the because I just like I like the way the paper feels. It's just I just thought I'll get that. And plus, I haven't seen another brand that do this because I like I like drawing in landscape. I haven't seen another brand that do sketchbooks like that. So that's why I ordered that. It's the only I black but for there there you go bang on exactly yeah. Great minds think alike, as they say. Love it. What um, pencil did you get? Because pencils are another thing I've... The pencils I use... I, it's funny that you mentioned the red one. I really like using um, blue. 
but specifically like a baby blue. So um, I've got this one, a, that's a rot, rot ring. <clears throat> I at first started using this one, uh, a curry toga, but the lead in this is a 0.5. And the lead, I always used to get refillable leads for this, but they've stopped doing them on Amazon. So I can't use this anymore because I'll just run out of lead and never be able to use it. Um, but I've got two. Where's the other one? I've got a metal one as well. Where are you? Oh, box of goodies. So the blue ones I use, it's this one, that's a graph gear, Pentel, I use that one. But I, I like using them because if I want to, like if I'm doing a drawing like this in my bigger sketchbooks, and I want to get a more specific set of shapes down, like especially in the graffiti ones, I'll... Um, and I don't really want to want it to show up on camera if I film it. But I can still see it. Um, I, I do like the, the blue colour and it's, when, it's very easy to rub out as well. So it doesn't show up as much. But I have thought about um, getting... Red was one of the colours that I thought about. But yeah, there's a rotring one. But I do prefer, I, I like mechanical pencils as well. I do prefer them. I got an inexpensive Pilot pencil, Eno, I think it was called, and some refills, Red Lad. Pilot, yeah, really good. I really like Pilot. Um, was this one a, no, that was a Pentel. But I have used Pilot pens before. I, I quite like rotting ones. So I've got a couple of them. So that's the main one I use. That's a thicker one. Like if I'm drawing stuff in pencil and I want to just get a quick thick outline. But the main pencil, oh sugar, if I don't drop it. The main one I use is this one. Uh, 500 is it? That's a 300, that's 500. I don't think they were too expensive. They're about seven pounds each. Something like that. I have seen mechanical pencils though that are like 40 pounds. And I'm like flipping out. There was an one of the reasons I actually got that thicker one. There was an artist I follow. Um, I haven't watched him in a while though. Uh, when I was going through the phase of thinking about trying to do comic book art, but then I gave that up because I can't draw anatomy. Uh, ZHC, I think his channel was called. He was called Zach, I think. And I loved his style of uh, comic art and he did really good he did sort of really good quick sort of tutorials on how to draw the body um so like the the torso and i actually had quite a lot of success i think those on my old um it's a shame i haven't got my old instagram up because there was quite a lot on there but the problem was I could never, unless I kind of copied it direct from the tutorial, I could never really develop it into like my own character. I just found it too difficult. But I just remember he was one of the guys who... I uh, quite liked. And then he stopped... We didn't. I don't think he stopped, but he just started doing stuff like. Um, what did he start doing? Like eat a cake in under a minute and you win a Tesla. I don't know some guff that. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in stuff like that. Nothing wrong with doing that. It's just not for me. I'm not a child. I don't want to watch people eat cake for money.
but I'm liking your um, your step into uh, the one I usually draw as a pentel one. That has a clicker when you stand reset. So it's just, yeah, I've got a pen. Uh, that I think the very first I bought this when I was in college, and I still have it. I remember I paid five pounds for it, and I was over the moon. And I still do use it. This pen is it pentel? You said. Yeah, this one I bought when I was in. This is a. I've had this for maybe 20 years, I think. And it was the very first mechanical pencil I bought. And even if it breaks and it stops working, I think I'll always keep it. I'll frame it. But yeah, that was the very first one I started using. But no, I was saying before that I'm, I think it's really cool that you're going into. Um, you started sort of drawing letters and, and words. I, I, I'm all about that. I love lettering art. You know, not even, it doesn't even have to be graffiti, but when I see people do like calligraphy or um, more traditional letterhead art, I just, I really like just that style. Um, and I really, really like the the stuff that you showed me the other day, I thought it was really good. I was saying earlier before you came on that um, I thought about doing a second episode of this, but but I really want to crack on with um, getting getting more um, graffiti sketches in. So I've been working on incorporating this kind of art with my lettering. Um, I, thought, I suppose I could quickly show you. Um, yeah, so that's what I was working on, just sort of playing about with sketching today. Whoops. Took some basic shapes of letters that I've already done, and I tried incorporating... Like, I got quite um, motivated by the drawing I did yesterday, which I really liked. Um, and I was saying that I'm going to lean more into the sort of game inspir inspiration, uh, the 2D shoot 'em up games. Because that's kind of what a lot of my drawings look like, where they could sort of spawn from. So I thought, well, if I lean into that and refine it, I think I could sort of make that sort of more my style, distinctly my work. And I've, set, I've listed off a load of artists as well that kind of do more, <coughs> excuse me, more, how would you say, abstract lettering. Like I said earlier that I know graffiti in itself is a bit of an abstract, but even more so. Like if you if you want, you can message, message me in a bit and I'll hook you up with, hook you up with, like I know them. Huh. I will direct you to um, the artists that inspire my work because they've got it. Like there's what? Yeah, there's a couple of them who've just got it down so well that I think yeah, that's what I wanna what I wanna do. Really nice letters. Thank you. Yeah, I've, like I said, for a while I've been quite happy with the outline of the lettering, but the cut, detailing them and colouring them, I've kind of been a bit lost, I think. Like the last two that I did, I didn't really know what to do. So they were a little bit all over the place. Like I had an idea, and then when I put it down, it just didn't work. So I wasn't the happiest with it. I thought, mm. back to the drawing board, I think. I still want to put something over this way. I think I know what I want to do.
I might put some extra detail on this. I used to make graffiti pieces of the alien script that Peter draws to all his viewers years back. Oh, wicked. That sounds familiar. Um, I, I saw a, oh, a very, oh, it's very vague in my head, that he did, I think it was when he did a sketchbook tour, I think I saw he did a page where he had um, a script, or like like alien letters, is, is that what you mean? I didn't know he did, um, I didn't know like he, de he developed that a bit more where he sort of spoke to viewers about it, I thought that's wicked. I remember when I saw that, and um, in an old art book, I wish I still had it, I don't know what happened to it, one of my old art books from school, I remember this, in year, year eight, I don't know, yeah, was I in year eight? Yeah. In um, art class, I, um, <clears throat> for a project, I created a, an alien language, and I thought, it's another one of those things where I think back to certain work I did as a kid. I thought, oh, if I'd have just developed that or carried on with it, you know, I could be miles further on. But like I say, because back then in the sort of 90s and noughties, you're not conditioned, but you're kind of taught that if you're going to sort of do art, it needs to be... A more traditional type of art like you know when you draw your fruit bowls and your anatomy and all that stuff because it didn't really interest me I didn't pursue it and I never ever thought you could just do whatever you wanted you had to be more traditional and back then when I first discovered graffiti in 99 I was in secondary school I absolutely fell in love with it but it was kind of seen more as what criminals do you know you go and spray up a train or with your spray cans and I thought mm, I don't really want to just go and spray a name on a wall I want to you know I would have wanted to have done something more but then I thought well there's no graffiti course at college is there a uni so I thought I'll go I'll pursue my video game Um, interests that went to pot at uni because uni sucked um, and then I was kind of just sort of dithering on well, what do we do now then if if that's not working out took a while to figure out what I wanted to do but finally settled on something that I want to do permanently I've almost had to start again, which is a bit scary, but at the same time exciting. And it's like, I've never been as enthusiastic about doing art as I am now. It was a cipher that looked quite alien. I've always been intrigued by graffiti, but for myself, I doubt it'll ever go past sketching, drawing little pieces. I think that's fine, though. I think if you, if you, I think if you've always got an interest in it, just just play about with it. Um, like even if it's just sketching, drawing, um, just little bits and pieces. I think even that's fine because even if it's not something that you develop further than that. You could use that. This is just how I think of it. You could use whatever you sketch or draw just when you're playing about. You could draw inspiration from that for bigger drawings or for drawings or artwork that you do want to pursue. That's just the way I see it anyway. Um, but I don't think it's ever wasted. Like I've, I've, I've learned, it took me a while to learn this. And I've heard quite a few people say that just even the scribbles that you do in a notepad, um, you know, you could it, it, a lot of the time it's where you can draw some of your best inspiration from because you're more relaxed, you're not thinking of anything specific. 
and you just end up you end up um, drawing something out from that. It's one, I think it's one of the reasons why I started recording and um, live streaming when I do that. Because I thought I need quite a lot. Sometimes I might need a good couple of hours, like especially on the on a Monday, like to get back into my drawing, like after a weekend, when I've like had a day or two off. If I decide not to draw, which sometimes I don't, I'll, I'll either like I definitely always have the Saturday off because I, I actually do think a day off, you know, is important just to do whatever you want. Like I, I tend to watch films with my son. Or, like, I'll get stuck into, like, a proper video game. Um, Sunday. I'll probably just... Uh, Sunday's a random day. Like, I might just decide to just scribble about in my book, which I'd probably record. Um, and that's when I'll do, like, a game record uh, for my gaming channel. But the last few Sundays I've properly neglected it. I think I've got more of an insecurity about being on camera when I'm playing games. Because I, I always seem to think, if you're not a speedrunner when it comes to playing video games, because I've, I've watched speedrunners play and it's incredible watching them play games. I love watching people do things well. I just think they're going to have to be entertained in some other way. So I've got to be good on camera at commentating or being funny or whatever. And I just don't think I'm that good at being on camera. So I kind of put myself off doing it. But I think like anything, just get on with it. You're going to be rubbish at first. So you may as well just keep going. Until you get that confidence, it's, I mean, it's working for this. We are getting there, we are getting there. If anyone else is in the chat, welcome. Hit that like and subscribe and all that stuff that YouTubers and streamers say. Quarter past one already. My goodness. Oh, I, mm, not quite. I think I've unintentionally made this look a bit like a diamond. A little bit like that. Ow, how much space did my others fill? See, the first one I did, mm. yeah, I don't know, I don't know how I want to detail this, if I want to detail it at all, do I want to panel it out, do I want to thicken up the borders a bit? Anyway. Problem is, because it's all one colour, like I think it will be hard to thicken out the borders.
because it, it will be hard to distinguish that from the details on the inside where the, all the sort of main guts are. I suppose if I'm doing it with a with a black pen, you could see it. See what what would be really useful, what would be really helpful, is if I had like a point zero zero three of this colour. That would be good. And then I could maybe put some panels in. I still might. In fact, no, because it wouldn't work. <clears throat> because it means I'd have to go and thicken out every single border. And then go and panel it up. So is there a different way I could... I could do it. I don't know. might I don't know mm. then it's harder I don't know I don't know because I do I do quite like that I've unintentionally made it look like a diamond I don't I don't want to mess that chi up if you know what I mean I quite like the feel of that what I might do then is I might just detail some more of the innards that I've missed. Like here. I might just leave it as a whole. I might just leave it as a plain white panel then. If I don't need to. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it as a plain white panel. I think that would work. And then block in. Any bits like this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to fill in because there's big gaps all like here. It's all over the place. It's Friday, Friday. I love Fridays. Hey, what? Because Wednesdays for me are one of those days where I'm off out, it's a busy day. But it's one of those days where even though you're busy, you don't feel like you've accomplished much. Because you've got to go out and do the food shop and do other bits for the house. And it's just... All your mundane chores and all that guff. And I hate it. But Friday's here. Saturday as well and I love what I love I love Saturdays where I do nothing they're, they're just my favorite just a day off from the world don't have to deal with chores or any of that nonsense kids can do their own thing wonderful it's a wonderful day
yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll fill in. It's looking really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to fill in. There's gaps between the panels that I've not filled in. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to do that and just leave the panels white. But what I might do to kind of go in with the theme of making it look more metallic. What I won't do panels through the centre of each shape. I'll do what I've been doing on the others. What on my previous drawing, I'd like have a little sort of box away from it like that, or a dot. Like to highlight that it is its own. Something like that, just to give it a bit of a bit extra detail, I think. Yeah, I think that could work. One of the things I'm going to do on my Monday stream that I want to incorporate back into my drawings are clouds. I did it on my last sketchbook. The reason I had to stop, I actually wanted to do more detail on that one, but I had to stop because my eyes were starting to go really badly because I was knackered yesterday. Which I was a bit frustrated at because I thought, oh, I'm, I'm really liking the cloud effect, but my lines started going all to hell. So I thought, no, I'm going to have to wrap it up because it's just going to start being really untidy. Yeah, I mentioned before that as well, whenever I come to the Arteza series, I tend to follow on from the type of drawing I've done that week in my sketchbook. Oh, excuse me. So with this one, like all the added details on the panels and stuff. Got to go. It was nice catching up with us. Always take care, mate. Good luck. Cheers, man. Thank you for popping in. Thank you for stopping by. Uh... I'll be streaming Monday next. Uh, pop in there if you can. Otherwise, uh, I'm sure we'll chat again between now and then on the old Insta and all that. But have a good one, bud. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, I thought I thought about streaming on Sunday, but now get the get your get get your game stream done first. I think I even mentioned about I might stream after this. I don't know. No, I'm no, I'm not gonna. I don't think. Because I want to concentrate on on the drawings that I don't have to worry about. The stream itself, I just want to focus on the drawing.
chair. Shut up. Coming up to the end, just fill in all the details, you know.
Uf. It's weird. It's it's mad. I'm, I'm looking at the um, the screen, and it seems to be showing up sort of brighter and clearer on my computer screen than on my own eyes. Do I need glasses? Do I need some glasses? I might do. Missed one in there somewhere, but I think let's have a look at you. Do you know? What? I think I'm gonna leave that. I think I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, I am. I, I, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Let's sign it off. I'll put that here. Cool. And that's that. I am happy with yet another drawing. Jasmine Yellow, what was it called? Yeah, I've written it down in the title. Not to be mistaken for piss yellow, which is what I thought it was, because it looked exactly like it. Turns out it was actually a very nice colour. Um, nice and bright and vibrant. Crunching my back. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined. Uh, nice to see you again, Koo. Good chatting. Hope to see you in the next one. Um, I did think about doing a second stream later on, um, but I have decided, because I've not done very much graffiti work, because I've shied away from it, I'm going to spend the rest of today um, just in my sketchbook. I'm not even going to record it either. I'm going to sort of try and knuckle down and fill out a few pages uh, to improve uh, and develop it a bit more into a workable style that could be shared. Well, that can all be shared, but you know what I mean? But in the meantime, this is uh, episode seven of our Every Artizer Pen. 
Uh, I'll be back again with this series next Friday, 12 o'clock, same time. I will be streaming again on Monday. Um, so there'll be the Monday morning or the Monday lunchtime stream of just scribbling nonsense. Then I'll be streaming again at 7pm on Monday uh, in the Black Book. Tuesday is just time-lapse day. I'll be uh, recording in my sketchbook and the A6 pad. Um, again, I don't know how many I'm going to do. Wednesday, black book, stream, Thursday, time-lapse day, Friday, this. Um, I might put something on my page about that. Uh, but anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, any likes, subscribes, all that stuff, greatly appreciated. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.